Are you a geology, environmental science, or biology major wondering how to get that hands-on experience that employers are always looking for after you graduate? I mean, there's only so much we can learn in a classroom. But luckily, the rest you can get from the upcoming Texas Hydrogeo Workshop that takes students through hands-on training in everything from basic camping skills to rock identification, water sampling, conservation biology, and you get to pick Pick which modules you'd like to do based on your interests. This year is the 10th Texas Hydrogeo Workshop and it's happening on October 18th, 2025, the day before GSA Connects 2025. So if you're coming down for GSA, this would be a great opportunity, especially if you are an undergrad looking to network with potential employers or even potential advisors for grad school. Professionals, professors, and students come from all around the world to take part in this workshop, so secure your spot today. You can either sign up when you register for GSA Connects, or you can sign up for the workshop separately through GSA's Field Trips page. All the links are down below. So with that, let's get into the conversation that I got to have with one of the co-leaders of this workshop. My name's Gary Schindel. I'm a professional geologist in the state of Texas. And about 10 years ago, we, uh, we decided to host this workshop called the Texas Hydrogeo Workshop. The thought was is that it would provide students and others with the opportunity to work with other professionals in the field and to actually get hands-on uh, real-world field experience. It's been very successful. We've had uh, students from almost every college and the university in the state of Texas, and many have traveled wow. from as far as Florida and New York, and we've even had people come in from Kenya and Mexico and Brazil for the workshop. Wow, that's incredible. So 10 years, and you've been a part of this for all 10 years? I've been the co-chair the whole 10 years. Wow. So. And so what kind of inspired this to begin with? Well, I was doing some adjunct teaching at some of the universities and that, and one of the comments that we got from some of our students was they would like some more field opportunities to actually get work experience, to be able to look at data collection and the earth sciences. And the idea was to bring uh, students together with practicing professionals as well as professors and then and basically a weekend workshop. That's so powerful. You know, we go through classes and stuff. And we don't often get that hands-on, more applied experience where, you know, in industry, you're doing all these things and, and you don't necessarily get those skills just in the classroom. So it's so important to go out there and learn from the people doing this every day. That's such a cool bridge that you built with this workshop. That's really awesome. And it's everything from very basic skills, how to camp, how to change a tire, how to read a map how to identify rocks to very specialized uh, modules on how to conduct nitrates, how to run geophysical surveys, how to do logging, how to take a water sample, how to gauge a stream, et cetera. So uh, it, it's giving the students a wide exposure. We've also added some field biology or wildlife biology courses for doing things like stream sampling and looking at benthic communities and identifying uh, cave critters, et cetera. So it's continued to expand and get better every year. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah, the, the title of this is the Hydrogeo Workshop. And in the description online on GSA's website, it talks a lot about these connections between hydrology, like water systems and geology and you know, biology. So why do you try and do all these things in one workshop? Why are these connections so important? Well, that's, a, that's an excellent question. Why do we do it? Uh, I'm not quite sure why we do it. It's a huge <laughs> amount of work and we're all volunteers. But I think a lot of it has to do with enjoying giving back to the uh, profession. And we've had a number of students who have actually gotten internships as well as actual uh, careers from uh, interacting with many of the professionals in the workshop. And what we're finding also is the field um, sciences are all interconnected. So it's hydrology, biology, hydrogeology, environmental science. And this year, I think we're, we're going to even have a, a module or two on astronomy. So we have some folks who will be setting up telescopes and maybe we'll be doing with the planetary geology. So we'll see. That's so cool. I've always been one of those people that loves everything, every science. And so that's why I love geoscience because you everything on earth is connected. The biology, the chemistry, the rocks. I mean, my grad work was biogeochemistry because I couldn't pick. I liked it all. Yeah. And, then, you know, this is where you find that is in earth systems, in natural systems, you find all these interdisciplinary connections. 
And that's so amazing. And also what you said about just the networking, you know, I also used to be one of those students that would stay in my hole and just to apply to a lot of things from afar. I didn't want to go talk to people, but just simple, like going to a fun workshop can be a way to network and meet really important people that might become future employers. And it's like a really powerful thing that I think a lot of early students might be nervous to do, but it's such an important thing. Just, you know, talk to people. These people, they're just people too. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of our modules is career counseling. And so we have a lot of uh, some of our older members who really enjoy talking to the students and basically tell them, don't make the mistakes I made. Do this instead. <laughs> Bring yeah. a resume. Yeah. We'll give you some recommendations. You know, what, what direction is the kind of the field heading? You know, we also have a, a number of universities that have set up booths and uh, use it to recruit graduate students because it's a wonderful place to basically find your next grad student. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of grad students versus undergrads, like who are you targeting with this workshop? Is it just for, you know, undergrads, grads, other professionals, or can, you know, general public members join in? Who is this for? Yeah, it's, it's open really to anyone, but we really focus on undergraduate students. We do encourage graduate students to come. And so we have lightning talks in the evening uh, so they can present some of their research. And then we also cool. encourage them to either help with the modules as instructors. So oh, that's um, awesome. So it's really an attempt to try and integrate everybody. But we get everything from uh, freshmen to seniors to graduate to even postgraduate students. So that's that's really awesome. So a wide, diverse range, and they're all getting like different experiences. Getting that instructional experience as a grad student is really helpful not you know even if you don't want to go and teach you know it's just good to be able to communicate what you're doing that's going to be helpful on whatever you go into and you know can you walk us through maybe some of the hands-on activities that the students get to do during this workshop well sure we have a number of different activities that are just what i call basic field skills and they usually run about one hour and we have a number of people who are going to field camp who've really never been camping and so mm -hmm. it you know, basically shows you how to set up a tent, how to, you know, select the right equipment, um, field safety, you know, dealing with uh, critters, uh, heat exhaustion, hypothermia, hypothermia, et cetera, and also how to work field instruments. So we have a module that basically deals with compasses and maps and rock hammers and makes recommendations on, you know, some of the equipment that you may need as, and, you know, for your field studies. We, we have a couple modules that go over how to analyze and how to present your data. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, how to keep a notebook in the field. You're developing and keeping your uh, your field notebooks and that. Some of the basics required for environmental, you know, phase one environmental site assessments. And then there are some of the other more hands-on field data collection programs, including we have a drill rig that comes out and we show people how the drill rig operates, how to collect and identify samples, some of the instrumentation and some of the health and safety issues associated with collecting environmental samples. We do the same thing with water. So we will have people who will show you how to collect the sample, how to preserve a sample, how to transmit it to a laboratory, some of the parameters that you may be interested in, some of the container specifics. We have a rock identification program and we have a rock identification contest and Estwing has been uh, generous enough to donate rock hammers to give away as, as prizes. Oh, that's cool. Uh, probably one of the most popular modules we have is we will actually take students into a wild cave nearby and they can walk into the cave for a few thousand feet. We talk about cave safety, cave biology, cave geology, wow. et cetera. And then of course we have our field lunch contest. So you can win valuable prizes. So you can come in and present a, a field lunch, bribe the judge, chocolates always <laughs> encouraged. And we also give away prizes for that. And then in the evenings, on Saturday night, we have a keynote speaker, which is held in the cave. So we all go into Cave Without a Name into their big uh, central hall. And uh, oh. this year, Dr. Scott Tinker will make, be making a presentation. And then afterwards, we have our yodeling and hog calling contest, which is very, very popular. And we also <laughs> give away uh, some rock hammers for the winners of that. And the bragging rights for the entire year until next Of course. Wow. Yeah. This sounds so diverse, the variety of things. And, you know, I think it, it really speaks to kind of just the diversity of geoscience and earth science and water science, hydrology, biology, all these things in general and, and their diverse connections. Because 
you know, a lot of people might think about a geoscience based workshop out of Texas would be very, you know, oil and gas focused, but the learning about how to take environmental samples, water samples, biology, conservation biology, going into caves, these are things that you know, are very, not just about oil and gas, there's all these other things that are important for our scientists to work on and study for water security and natural hazards, climate change, all these other environmental issues. And so I think that really hopefully encourages a wide variety of students to to get interested. And, you know, it's something, again, another thing we don't learn in the classroom are these simple things like camping, yeah. simple camping basics and things like that. It's not just always about using the compass and taking the strike and dip and using the rock hammer, you know, learning these other life skills of being out in the field, whether you're doing science or not, are really important yeah. and also really fun. So yeah. it sounds like it'll be a really awesome time. And yodeling, I mean, who doesn't love that? <laughs> it was, that uh, really yeah, fun. it was kind of a, we thought we would use that to break the ice and it's just been incredibly popular and very competitive among schools. Wow. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I bet, I bet they can be competitive about that. Well, you That's know, one funny. of our, uh, very interesting, uh, we have some folks who do a lot of field work and they have indicated that some of their new folks that they go out in the field with don't necessarily know how to utilize uh, off-road vehicles well. And so we brought in somebody mm. from the, uh, one of the off-road clubs and he talks about vehicle maintenance and he makes everybody change a tire. And you'd be surprised at how many people who don't know how to change a tire or never just never had to. I don't know if he's using it to actually rotate his tires, <laughs> using the students to help make <laughs> yeah, it but, make uh, the actually, students do it. It's actually been pretty pretty uh pretty popular uh, module in that and one that I think everybody should take. Absolutely. That's one of the things that, you know, even if you're not gonna go into a field of geoscience that involves field work, I mean my entire graduate degree was done in the lab. Like I fully was just indoors in a chemistry lab. There was no field work involved in my research, but that doesn't mean I don't need to know how to change a tire. <laughs> so that's, it can come in handy. And I also love camping. So like, you know, if you like outdoors and you like to drive, like <laughs> you need to know these things. And that's a fun and group setting, you know, way to do it. Well, we've been uh, we've been very fortunate. And this year with GSA coming into San Antonio, it uh, allows us the opportunity to sort of showcase the workshop to the rest of the country. And so yeah. we're encouraging people from other areas to come in. And we know that we've had a number of people who've been hired as interns, and we know we've had a number of people who've been hired for you know the beginning of their professional careers with, with a number of the companies that. And then we had somebody in the meeting that said, you know, I attended the workshop when uh, I was a, a student in Texas, and the exposure to some of the uh, groundwater aspects with cars encouraged me to go on to get my graduate degree. They went to uh, Western Kentucky University where they studied sinkhole and sinkhole collapse issues because of our workshop. Oh, and we turned around and wow. were able to give them a, a scholarship to help with their studies. So, oh, wow. A little, that is a little incredible. Bit of money to help. Yeah. And that's, so we, we've been real fortunate. We've, we've put the uh, money back into the community. We try and make the, the conference a little easier, the workshop a little easier. The registration includes breakfast on Saturday and Sunday, dinner on Sunday, on Saturday night, free camping, a t shirt, a number of other handouts. In the past, I've actually been able to give away some very nice textbooks that were basically remainder. You know, that, and that I don't know if we'll be able to do that again this year, but we're certainly working on it. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually curious what are some, what are like some of the biggest ways that the workshop has evolved over the decade that it's been running and has it, you know, what has been driven or what changes maybe have been driven by the participants? Well, that's a good question. We started out thinking we would get 30 or 40 people. It quickly evolved to 70 the first year, which we then had to expand to 250. And we finally just said the first year, we said, you know, wow, this is much more popular than we thought it would be. I'm not sure we can handle 250 people, but we did. Yeah. We've been able to expand the program out and handle about 300 to 300. It, it seems to run about 300, 325 people. We have expanded the program to include biology in the last four or five years. And we've really tried to keep this design for hands-on field work working directly with practitioners and professors in the field. And it's been very successful in that part. Yeah. And I'm curious for this year, what is the one stop or activity that you're looking forward to the most? Oh, well, uh, Dr. Tinker's presentation. I know oh, he's okay. an outstanding speaker. Um, he, you know, he has his, his own PBS series and that he really enjoys working closely with students. So it, it'll be fun to have him there. 
and uh, and also yeah. you know I'm hoping to get a really good turnout from GSA. I I think this is yeah. a pretty novel and I think fairly unique educational opportunity for students, and it'd be really nice to see it held in other regions in the U.S. Absolutely, and to have people coming from all across the U.S. and elsewhere, it's really nice to make it coincide with GSA, so that you know if you're coming in, this is a great opportunity to get some hands-on stuff, which. You know, GSA as a conference is great, but the hands-on stuff comes at the field trips and these workshops. So hopefully a lot of students that are coming in for GSA see how valuable this could be. But, you know, if you could sum it up, what are the main takeaways or the main things that you hope participants walk away with, whether it be in terms of skills or just general inspiration? Well, you know, we're hearing a lot of people who may be freshmen or sophomore, they're really kind of undecided about majors still. And what I'm hearing is people attend the workshop and say, I've, I've found my calling. And uh, that's really inspirational. And I think it keeps our you know, our module presenters coming back. Yeah. So it's, it's been really good uh, in that area. I know that the folks who, uh, you know, in the academic world really like to bring their students there because it allows them to interact with other people. It gives a wide exposure to uh, opportunities in that field, in that career field. So. Yeah, it's so broad. There's not a lot of experiences that group all that together and allow you to get all of that from all these different diverse experts in one workshop. So that's really amazing what you're do, doing and have been doing the last 10 years. I can't believe this is the 10th one. It, is it, it's pretty so crazy. Exciting. Um, the only complaint we've heard is that the students are disappointed they can't take all the monsters. So can't do it all. You just got to pick and choose, you know, and then come back next. Oh, yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Come back and do them all. Yeah, I really that's wanted amazing. to take this module, but I want to take that one too. Yeah. Well, that's how I feel about all the things at GSA. I'm like, I want to go to this session, but also this session. Yep. There's so many, yep. so many interesting things to do. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I hope, I hope you guys get such a great turnout yeah. from GSA this year. And thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing all this. You're welcome and look forward to seeing you at the meeting.